is time to come back and time to start the show proper. Can everybody hear me? Uh, good evening, everybody. Looks like we've got uh, four people watching us. Three people on uh, Twitch, one person on uh, excuse me on Mixer. We've already got a donation from uh, Miranda, uh, as usual. Thank you, Miranda. You'll notice uh, this week I put a uh, hundred dollars on the uh, donation goal. What I'm going to do from uh, from now on is set a goal for for the evening, for the the length of the broadcast, rather than for the month. So I think um, that uh, two thousand dollar total for the month might be uh, intimidating to people. I think a hundred dollars uh, per uh, per evening might be a little more a little more reasonable, a little more doable. I'm going to adjust my camera a bit here. my head a little more properly centered yeah there we go uh, Miranda says enjoy the movie exclamation point um, are you uh, uh, are you not going to be staying with us I know you've been uh, active uh, downtown uh, in the evenings this week um, I hope you can stay, but I understand uh, if you can't. Um, 10.05 uh, is back and says, I'm back, baby. <laughs> I forget. W what's your name? Eric? Is that what? Um, Miranda says, I'm on my way to my food stand right now. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, well, good luck. Stay safe. Uh, and uh, watch the movie uh, tomorrow when you get back because you'll you'll like this. Um uh, Miranda says, just wanted to make sure you knew I donated. Oh, yeah, I would definitely know. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely always know. <laughs> right, uh, and the name is Eric. 1005 is Eric. I remember that correctly. Happy Goth Art says, hey, I'm watching, but I'm working on art also. Well, thank you for coming, uh, Carissa. Uh, Miranda says, oh, I will. Um, she will stay safe. Okay. All right. Uh, this is going to be... I'm not going to stretch this out to two and a half, three hours like I have with other movies. There's not going to be any uh, cartoon uh, from 1995 that I saw back in the 90s. Um, it's by a, uh, a filmmaker named Brian Springer uh, who put together this really remarkable uh, collection of, uh, of satellite feeds this was pre-internet 1995 was the internet had only just gotten started a, a couple of years before that and uh, uh, people were using uh, satellite uh, instead of cable um, I know uh, the house uh, I lived in at the time was um, uh, and Eric says twitch will only let me have numbers for my name I don't get that I don't understand that um, uh, anyway I'll, I'll take your word for it but uh, I was using satellite where I was living <clears throat> in the mid-90s. It was a very remote, very rural area. My dad had put in uh, a satellite dish. And uh, when, you would, when you would scan your dish across the sky to the various uh, satellites, you would often find uh, unedited uh, network feeds. And it really was fascinating sometimes. Well, Brian Springer spent many, many hours trolling these unedited satellite feeds, and he was seeing amazing things that were giving him insight as to how how news uh, was being uh, manipulated. And uh, he put together this uh, documentary uh, that uh, really, really blew my mind and really, uh, really messed me up about television and about news, um, and it's very relevant uh, today. And uh, I'll be showing that uh, shortly. Um, um, I, I don't. I don't have a, a cartoon or a short film, but I do have a, a collection of packages that came in over the last couple of days. Let's see. There's three there, four, and five. Five packages. Well, this is messing up the white balance. I got to do something about the white balance. In fact, the stuff that's in these packages is gonna help with that. It's a collection of uh, 
cheap uh, adapters and equipment that hopefully will allow me to uh, connect my uh, um, my legit uh, camcorders, my legit uh, uh, video cameras, the ones I use to uh, to make videos, to make my YouTube videos with, to connect to my computer and stream with real cameras instead of these crappy webcams that I have so much trouble with. Um, and uh, I'll make a video about all the testing that I've done. I bought several different uh, pieces of equipment, and we'll test them, see how they work. Mr. Fox Guy came in on Twitch. Hi, Mr. Fox Guy. Thanks for coming. It's nice to have a new uh, a new regular. Um, I said I would contact you uh, last time ab about doing some sort of uh, some sort of joint project, and I didn't. I, I I'm so terrible about that. I have no sense of time. I have uh, I have no idea how much time goes by. Uh, and uh, and, and I, I, I did it again, but I, I will get in touch. Um, we have uh, four people watching now, um, all on uh, Twitch. Uh, Mr. Fox says, no problem, time is fuzzy nowadays. Yeah, everybody is living now like I always have. <laughs> and so people are actually starting to understand <laughs> what it's like having, having no regular sleep schedule, um, basically working for yourself out of your home um, and Captain Slinky says I made it Facebook notified me good excellent Captain Slinky kind of glad to see you we what we need to do Mr. Fox guy you and me and Captain Slinky need to get together I'll, I'll, I'll tell you ah a five dollar donation from Robert thank you Robert we got twenty dollars uh, from Miranda so our total for the night is actually at 25 so we're a quarter to our goal for the night already. So what we need to do, Mr. Fox Guy and Captain Slinky, you and me and Mr. Fox Guy and uh, that other that other streamer that plays the that, that plays movies all day Saturday. What 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 is his name? The, the four of us need to get together and do like uh, we need to do a like a bad Saturday morning stream where each one of us contributes one or two short shows that we either really love or really hate. Um, and uh, we'll uh, laugh all the way through it and talk all the way through it. We need to do something like that. Uh, Mr. Fox X says, I love that idea. Captain Slinky says, I mean, I knew you guys would like that idea. I, I knew you guys would like that idea. And when you bring all of our various audiences together, um, yeah, I think that would be uh, great fun. Um, it, would be, it would be a lot of laughs, I think, and be very entertaining. Um, anyway, that's what I was going to contact you guys about, and might as well talk about it now. Um, yeah, we'll I'll uh, email you guys, and uh, and uh, we'll arrange that. We'll 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 uh, we'll figure out how to do that. Um, I I don't have anything else to talk about really, um, except that uh, the uh, the move out from the 50th Street Studio Space in Renton is complete, um, and. Uh, uh, all the legal stuff is done. Um, all of the uh, uh, all of the money problems have been worked out, and uh, it's, it's worked out very favorably. So all that's over. Don't have to talk about it anymore. But uh, Captain Slinky says I used to run a Saturday A.M. reenactment society. That sounds awful. <laughs> that sounds really really bad. <laughs> What what parts did you play? Tell me the the parts that you played on that. Uh, Eric says I would like to watch that. Yeah, <coughs> <coughs> I figured you. Would. Captain Slinky yells at me. Unsubscribe! <laughs> Exclamation point. <laughs> uh, when did you when did you do this? And, and is there any video of it? Was this pre-internet? Was this uh, um, was it done on the internet at all? And what? To tell me the parts that you played. What were the parts that you played? I, I want to know. <clears throat> and uh, what lamps are you working on uh, tonight? Are you working while you watch? For those of you who don't know, Captain Slinky live streams uh, regularly, and he builds um, he builds table lamps out of uh, out of retro junk, uh, bits and pieces of toys, and. Uh, VHS tapes, uh, stuff like that. 
And uh, he heard about us uh, at 50th Street really early on. Never made it out to the studio to see a movie, but he comes to the streams now. Um, it was a pre-Twitch live stream of our ripped Saturday morning VHS tapes. No actual acting. Okay. Um, oh, so you were... Um, okay, you were putting together video clips. Okay. Because I, th I was picturing like a... Like a uh, like a Saturday morning um, LARP <laughs> kind of thing, like a Saturday morning Renfest. <laughs> that might actually get me to go to Renfest uh, <laughs> if there were people dressed up as Bigfoot and Wild Boy. <laughs> um, uh, Margie Blast says, uh, just passing by. Are you not going to be able to stay with us, Margie? Um, yeah, I, I, I hope you'll be staying to see the uh, the uh, documentary. If if you can't, I understand, and uh, I I know you'll uh, you'll watch it later. Um, Mr. Fox guy says Thundar Renfest. Captain Slinky says like a Civil War reenactment, only less beards and more cereal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's. Uh, I just got a. I just got a notice of. Uh, okay, I got another payment from somebody else for some other thing. Okay. Okay. That's always good when uh, donations are coming in. Thundar Renfest. Wow. You get to. You get Ookla and Bigfoot together. <laughs> that that was uh, that was a fascinating idea for a Saturday morning cartoon, Thundar, wasn't it? Um, it, it was like a, it was like a combination of uh, Planet of the Apes, Logan's Run, John Carter of Mars, all mashed together, and the moon in the sky was was two pe in two pieces, two big pieces, and, and still orbiting <laughs> the Earth. And Mr. Fox guy says, it worked. Yeah, well, well. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> well, um, I'll, uh, um, I'll kill it. Well, we're, it's, it's just 12 after. Captain Slinky says, it was so good. I, you know, it was, uh, it was an okay idea. Everything, uh, God, everything uh, animated during that time was so poorly executed, though. The the production values were so terrible. Um, yeah, I, I wish that those are such good ideas and such good. Eric says, if you say so, lol. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, Thundar was another one of those things um, that. Oh, we got a donation from Mr. Fox guy. Thank you so much. So we're at forty-five, twenty-dollar donation from Mr. Fox guy. So he gets the the bulging dollar eyes from Daffy Duck. Um, Captain Slinky says, "I'll send you Facebook info on how we did the Saturday morning thing. See if we can adapt. But first, movie. He wants the movie. Okay." Um, Margie says, "I was studying, but hey, I need a break. What are you studying for, Margie? I didn't know you were. Uh, I didn't know you were doing um, doing some kind of school thing." Is it a, is it an adult education thing? Yeah, let me know what you're doing. Margie um, made, uh, she's donated uh, a couple hundred dollars over the last uh, couple of months. So she got, she took home uh, the Iron Giant, the Iron Giant toy and uh, sent me a photo of him up on the shelf between, um, between her uh, Godzilla model kit and uh, what was that other model kit? It was like a, a, a like a glow in the dark Wolfman or something, one of those retro model kits. Yeah, a great uh, great little shelf she's got there. Um, we've got seven people watching now. Yeah, that's great. Seven people, six of them on Twitch, and Margie's on uh, Facebook. Welcome everybody. Everybody who comes in, please say hello. Uh, let me know who you are, and if you're new. Um, let me know how you found us. We'll start the movie shortly. It's uh, it's not very long. It's uh, it's only an hour, um, but it is a uh, 
really heavy documentary about uh, the manipulation of media, specifically television. It has a great deal of relevance uh, for what's going on today. Um, and we'll get that started uh, shortly. I have not watched this documentary through in many, many years. I think probably since the, the 1990s. So much of it's going to be fresh for me. We have eight people uh, watching now. That's great. People coming in. Somebody on uh, on uh, YouTube. Uh, welcome. Everybody, please say hello. I'll see your chats. Type type in your various chats, and I'll see your chats. The only chats I won't see would be on Picarto. I am streaming on Picarto. Let's see. We're streaming on Twitch, Mixer, YouTube, Periscope, Facebook, and Picarto. And uh, the only chats I can't see are on uh, Picarto. There's something about the API that I don't have right. It's amazing that all this works. Honestly, uh, I'm I'm still I've been using this for. I've been using Restream for a couple of uh, a couple of months now, no, a couple of years now, and I'm I'm always amazed that it actually works. But this uh, this unfortunate virus uh, thing is going to have the happy effect of uh, perfecting the live streaming technology, all the, all the technology and the software and everything, because it it it's being forced to get better because everybody needs it now. Um, which will be a happy result. Margie says, job related, it was Godzilla and the creature from the Black Lagoon. That's right. Uh, interesting note, both of them are in their original 1960s unopened package. Wow. So you've got the actual Aurora model kits, not the, uh, not, not the Northern Lights remake kits. You've got the original Aurora kits. Wow. That's great. And she says the Iron Giant is very happy to be there. Margie, remember he has batteries in him. So if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna uh, leave him on the shelf for the time being, you might want to take the batteries out. Um, oh, we got another donation from Cherry Round in Florida. Ah, that's who's watching us on uh, YouTube. Cherry Round, twenty-five dollars. So we are at uh, seventy dollars. We've got seventy dollars for the evening. That's fantastic. I am very happy about that. Thank you, everybody. I think I, I think I did the right thing by setting a $100 goal for the evening rather than putting the month the monthly 2000 goal. Uh, I think uh uh Minnesota Lakes says hello, good evening. Oh, it's it's uh, Minnesota who's watching us on uh, YouTube. Uh, hello and welcome. Mr. Fox guy says apart from referring to it as the Gill Man, <laughs> did the creature from the Black Lagoon uh ever get referred to as anything else? Um uh, Cherry around says hello. Um, he says, uh, hello, MFG. Oh, Mr. Fox guy. I was wondering what he was saying. Um, Mr. Fox guy says, hey, Cherry Round. Cherry Round says, A, 50th Street Studio. Um, thank you for coming, Cherry, and thanks for the uh, donation. Very much appreciated. That's very generous of everybody. And so we're at $70, and we got nine people watching. I'm glad to see so many people here. This is going to be a very interesting documentary, very depressing. It will make you... Uh, it will make you angry, <laughs> and it will also make you realize that uh, these these problems have been problems forever, and they're not really going to change. Rick Schmidt on Facebook says more Monster Squad. Heart, heart, heart. Um, maybe we'll do some Monster Squad someday. <laughs> that was a that was a great show. Go back and watch that 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 Monster Squad live stream. That was great fun. Terrible, terrible show. One of the worst shows I've ever seen. Um. But uh, it was fun watching it with people. Uh, Cherry Round says, hey, happy goth art. Um, so, uh, oh, 10 people watching now. This is fantastic. I'm really pleased with uh, the number of people we've got here. Uh, Rick Schmidt says it was super fun. Happy goth art donated $10. Thank you, happy goth art. What was that picture? There was a picture briefly on screen of, of a guy holding up some money what was that what what the heck was that that wasn't something that I put up in there what 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 did uh uh happy Gothart when you when you donated did you somehow uh yeah no the 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 picture of uh, Astro boy with his eyes going that that's I put that up there but then just before it there was a 
Oh, happy Gothard. I was going to ask you if you stuck that up there. Yeah, Streamlabs said I could use a GIF. Okay. So you picked one for yourself. Okay. Okay, that's fine. As long as I know what it was. Because, uh, yeah, if that had just been a mystery that came out of nowhere, I would have been like, I would have spent the next week trying to figure out what happened. Because <laughs> that was not somebody I recognized. Okay, so so you, you picked a gift. Great. So th that's interesting. So so when you made the donation and picked uh, and picked a gift, it showed yours and then showed mine. So it showed both. I had always wondered if someone picked one, would it would it would your pick supersede mine? Um, uh, she says it was from Community, the the TV show, the TV show Community. Is that what it's from? Okay. Well, I haven't thought of that show in a long time. Yeah, D didn't wasn't that the show about uh, some some people at a community college, and didn't they have like a, a special Chris animated Christmas episode? Cause cause I saw that and I saved it. I have it saved on on my movie disc somewhere because it was brilliant. And it's the only episode of the show I've ever seen. All right, We've got seven people. Uh, on Twitch, one person on YouTube, two people on uh, Facebook. Um, uh, who who here is new? Who here is uh, here for the first time? Is there anybody here who's who's watching for the first time? Uh, somebody who hasn't spoken up yet. Uh, let me know. Say hello. I think everybody's talked. I think everybody's had a had a time to to say hello. It's uh, 20 minutes after the hour, so I'll get the movie started. Um, Eric Schmidt says live, yes. Okay. I will, uh, I will get the movie started. I will keep my microphone on, but mostly I'll stay quiet. If, uh, if there's any part that I want to replay, I'll stop and go back. Um, Rick Schmidt says I always catch the reruns. Um, so had you not been here before uh, during a live stream, Rick? Because um, I, I I know your name from somewhere. Have you not been on the stream before? But but I've talked to you on Facebook. Is that what uh, is that what the deal is? Well, I'm glad you watched the reruns. Yeah, I'm glad you I'm glad you do that. There are people. He says he says that's correct. Well, welcome to the live stream. Um, I know there are people who actually go back and watch the reruns, and that amazes me. It amazes me that people actually watch those. So they're worth everything is worth uh, uh, keeping up there. I would recommend that. Um, uh, he says yes. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> um, do you watch the reruns on Facebook or do you watch them on uh, on Twitch or on YouTube or, or something? Because I would recommend that you watch them uh, elsewhere other than Facebook, because I can I can see statistics of who's watching what. On, on Twitch and YouTube, Facebook, I can't, I can't tell. Um, I'm amazed that you found this live thing on Facebook because Facebook is such a is such a chaotic and unpredictable uh, mess. Um, so I encourage everyone to uh, to go over to Twitch and to the YouTube channel and to uh, follow and to follow us and turn on the thing that will notify you. Uh, he says I do watch it on Twitch. That's good. Twitch is much more reliable, much more professional. Um, all right, we've got ten people watching. It's uh, twenty-three minutes past the hour. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna press play and start the movie. Ow! <laughs> this is not an accident, by the way. This is this is intentional. Nineteen ninety two was a year of kings. 
There was the LAPD beating of Rodney King, videotaped from an apartment balcony, and the hovering coverage of TV cameras and helicopters circling the city as the public rebelled. It was nearly 25 years after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King and Bill Clinton, a child of the 60s, was campaigning to become commander-in-chief, a king among the contenders. Hold on just a minute. Here's Larry King. Hello? Then there was Larry King, who was anointed as the father of talk show democracy because TV viewers could phone his program and ask the candidates questions on the air. The viewer calls to King's show was seen as a seat of a future TV democracy in which citizens could vote for a candidate or pending legislation by picking up a special remote control and voting yes or no. Taking viewer calls on Larry King's show is TV evangelist Pat Robertson, whose organization, the Christian Coalition, seeks working control of the Republican Party by 1996. I'd like to ask Mr. Robertson two quick questions. One, what he thought about the Bush quail commercials. Were they effective? Should they have had more family values on them? Also, how can you say you want a party of inclusion when you're so blatantly anti-gay? Behind the scenes and off the air, Robertson's media advisor tells Robertson how to turn around or spin the caller's question. You're answering the questions. Okay. You can talk about anything you want to. Well, I am moved. I want a kinder and gentler nation. This Bush campaign phrase was written by spin doctor and speechwriter Peggy Noonan. Because America is so infused by media that we are all spinning in a way. Uh, that it is, that it is... We're uh, embellishing our story. Uh, embellishment is okay. There's... What's not okay? Where does, uh, where does spin the begin? The disingenuous part, the, the calculating, this isn't the whole truth part. If he tries to corner you on the can and do the same thing, slide off it, go back to the inclusion. Mm. You've got to get, you've got to expand the party and you've got to bring everybody together. You can't worry about the problems of 1992, you've got to look ahead to 96. Mm -hmm. Focus on the future. So to speak. Anyone with a home satellite TV system, like the ones you see in bars or in people's yards, could have picked up Robertson and his spin doctor chatting off air. Dish owners are able to receive two types of TV. One is the regular TV programming you normally see on cable or the broadcast networks. Is that uh, Helmstead still the next one? The other type of TV is the satellite feed. In this case, the feed of George Bush and Larry King chatting during a commercial break. Kind of weird being seen around the world. Yeah. Technology. It's amazing. Saddam Hussein is watching this during this. Satellite feeds are used by the networks to transmit images of news events from around the world. An event covered by the network is transmitted up into space to a satellite. The satellite receives and retransmits the image of the event back down to Earth to the network's headquarters, where the video image is edited and contextualized as television. The home satellite dish owner can watch regular TV, or they can tune in the satellite feed and see the event before it has been packaged by the networks as television. In 1992, I bought a couple of satellite dishes and spent the entire year flipping through the channels looking for feeds. I'd lock onto a satellite and go channel by channel through its transmission, recording the feeds. Then I would move on to the next satellite, and the next one, and the next one. By the end of the year, I'd recorded more than 500 hours of feeds. Don't put a lot of that garbage on me. What is this? Are we on the national? Can we turn that on? I don't want to be on national television being just um, made up. Some of the feed guests knew, and some didn't know, their images were being broadcast, unscrambled and visible, to over three and a half million dish owners across North America. Those who knew they were being watched attempted to stay out of satellite TV's wide frame. But after spending hours a day inside of a television studio, television had become their home.
Aye. So to speak. Okay. Nineteen ninety one and ninety two had been years of political extremes for George Bush. After the Gulf War in nineteen ninety one, he had the highest approval rating of any president in modern history. But as the U.S. economy fell, so did Bush's ratings and his health. He and the First Lady Barbara Bush developed a thyroid condition known as Graves' disease. As Bush's ratings fell further, he decided to appear on Larry King's show. His appearance marked the first time a U.S. president had been on a call and talk show in over 15 years. You feeling well, by the way? Yeah. Are you feeling well? Good, yeah. Lucky. Running still and played tennis yesterday. What is that disease you have? Um, um, it's Crohn's. It's no, not Crohn's. Uh, it's thyroid. I don't know what it's about. What are they? they, they, they drug treater, right? They could take the drug every single morning, little blue thing, Centroid or something. And it wasn't hard. It's what the, it's what the thyroid does to make your heart fibrillate, which has been very good. Now, I took I Halcyon for a long time after my heart surgery. Are you off an antidote? I don't know that it's bad, like it. It's the best sleeping pill in the world, but not daily. No, oh no. Okay. Now it's going to a bad rap. Halcyon had gotten such a bad rap that its product license in Britain was provisionally withdrawn. Some users of the drug complained of amnesia, anxiety, delusions, and hostility. When Bush started the election year, he was taking a sedative during a visit to Japan when he fainted and threw up on the Japanese Prime Minister. For Bush, the image of the event could have been devastating. News stories of Jimmy Carter's fainting created a symbol of a failed president. It haunted Carter throughout his campaign and helped Ronald Reagan reach the White House. The first minute of Bush's fainting episode and the reaction of the frightened dinner guest was not released by the networks and is not seen here. Only this footage after the initial fainting was made public. Newsweek magazine published a story about the event with photographs from the censored Bush fainting episode, but the photographs obscured the view of the president's face. All traces of Bush's nauseating performance would be cleaned up by the White House television crew. Even this mantle photo of Bush's face next to a white baby's blanket may have looked too much like his face in Barbara's white napkin in Japan. You want to take one of the, Anna? You got it. Do whatever you need to do. I, so to speak. Okay. I'm going to pause there for a second. Did we, um, are we still on? I noticed that uh, for, uh, for a short while there, our, uh, our bits per second dropped to zero. I wanted to make sure that the, that the stream was not interrupted. Did anybody... Did anybody drop out? Yeah, there was a Mr. Fox guy says yes. So there was an interruption there. Some buffering happened. Okay, so that was that was happening on my end. Froze for a few seconds. Okay, so everybody saw that. Okay, I'll go back. I'll I'll re uh, I'll re I'll backtrack a little bit here. You want to take one of the, Anna? You got it. Do whatever you need to do. So to speak. This is the White House television studio, the satellite TV hub, which the president used to make news. From the White House studio, Bush would go up on a satellite, give a five-minute interview with a local news anchor, disconnect, hook up with another local news anchor, give an interview, disconnect, hook up with another one, and do this again and again and again. This type of satellite whistle-stop campaigning is called the satellite tour. 
This is a technician at the White House hooking up with TV stations in South Carolina and Florida for a satellite tour by Barbara Bush. Channel 4, do you read us in Washington? WYFF. Come in, come in. Remember that every single man, woman, and child in the state of South Carolina awakens to a freer, safer world because of George Bush. WIS, do you hear us in Washington? I would remind people that every single morning we all awaken to a safer, freer world because of George Bush. WCBD, do you hear us in Washington? And Nicole, I would remind you and the people of Florence that all of us awaken every single day to a freer, safer world because of George Bush. WCSC, do you read us in Washington? They themselves awaken every single day to a freer, safer world because of George Bush. Campaigning via the satellite tour allowed the candidates to cover long distances. But there was another major benefit. They could bypass the national TV networks. There was no need to feed through the TV network center and on to the local stations. The campaign was now the center and its own television network. This is great. I love this. Can we do any more? Can we do some now? We do this tonight. I'm going to do some more flying in Texas. Call, have we done all of Colorado today? Yes, we've got one more one. Today. Another way the candidates made news was by creating their own TV news stories called the Video News Release. The video news release was given free of charge to local TV stations. Sent via satellite by the candidate, the video news release consisted of a campaign-produced TV news segment, complete with intro text for the local TV anchor to read, and a news story edited by the campaign. I feel I have the experience and leadership to take America in new directions. One new direction, Job Training 2000. Mr. Bush's plan to retrain blue-collar workers and the unemployed for new job opportunities. The country's 11 largest business organizations endorsed... Nearly all the major candidates placed a video news release on local television. And nearly half the local TV stations which aired the releases didn't report that they had been produced by the candidate. For instance, this story's reporter, Michael Caputo, wouldn't be identified as working for the Bush campaign. Primaries March 17th. In Washington, this is Michael Caputo reporting. The campaigns had to pay out of their own pockets to produce the satellite media tours and video news releases. But their best and cheapest way of making news was through the TV talk shows. And the candidate's talk show of choice was CNN's Larry King Live, which made the front page of the New York Times 57 times during the election year. Well, Al Gore was famous, Tammy. <laughs> he, on his book tour, he drove over to Mutual Network all by himself, came up in that great Crystal City elevator. I still remember the day I became famous. Yeah. When your column in USA Today came out. On that thing, on that book. <laughs> I always remember the card you sent me. For the networks, making news meant making profits, as the candidates made nearly 100 talk show appearances. Tell Bill if he'd do that thing in New York, it'd be terrific. He's so good at this. Clint. Yeah, yeah. One of the problems with staying on a bus too long is the two of you guys are so good on media. Towards the end of the election, candidate appearances increased TV talk show ratings an average of 40%. You know what you ought to do? You ought to come out on the uh, bus. bus trip with us uh, one day. We could do a, we could do a joint uh, interview from the bus. Larry King said the campaign ratings bonanza turned the election into a TV miniseries like Roots or the Thornbirds. We're out of time. You can invite us on the bus. Okay. Uh, we have plum run out of time. Thanks for coming, Al. I I I'd like to invite you to come on the bus with us. 1992 was probably an historic first as a major network's advertising revenues from its political coverage made more money than it cost to report the campaign. 
For CNN, the election was a watershed as the network received its highest ratings since the Gulf War. But I want him to finish the thought here. That's the one break we have to hit live. It's, it's an around the world break. Hard to believe we're being watched in 151 countries. It's scary. I go, I'm in Israel, I'm at the Wailing Wall. True story, Israel, never been there before. They're with my brother. I'm Jewish, it's my culture. I'm standing there, there's an old rabbi, dominating. He's praying, old, a religious Jewish man. He looks up at me and he says, what's with Perot? <laughs> swear to God, what's with Perot? In Israel. I love it. <laughs> Crazy. Ted Turner changed the world. I'm a big fan of yours. Is he? He would uh, serve you, Pastor. You know what I mean? I don't okay. I'm really surprised. He's ready. What's he gonna? What's he got left in life? The game. I, you know, after you're elected, think about it. No dope. That's for sure. <laughs> Great guy to work for. Too. Amid continuing allegations of tabloid reports pointing to extramarital affairs, Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton is this noon campaigning across the South. Hello, Mike. Everybody in America who's had problems in their marriage and either wound up divorced or who got back together votes for me. I'm a shoe-in. Can you hear me? I figure if everybody in Maryland who's ever had trouble in their marriage and they're still together or who's ever been divorced votes for me, I'm a shoe-in. Uh, hello? And you know, if every American couple who's either been divorced or had problems and stayed married, votes for me, I'm a shoe-in for re-election. I think the American people are smarter than the pundits. Before Clinton was shooed into office, he had to compete against a host of other Democratic candidates. The media focused on four of these candidates, but Larry Agron was a fifth candidate the press did not report on. There's no makeup here? During the 1992 U.S. Conference of Mayors, the New York Times reported that, quote, dozens of mayors seem to agree on one thing. The single candidate who truly understands urban needs is Larry Agron, unquote. They promised to bring this stuff over. None of the networks mentioned Agron's presence at the convention. How about if I run over that super saver? One of Agron's staff had to run over to the Super Saver and buy some makeup because the network had broken its promise to provide it. This was typical of the media's treatment of Agron. When he appeared at this Democratic candidate's forum, this Associated Press photo simply cropped Agron out of the frame. During the New Hampshire primary, the TV news reported the polling numbers of the top five Democratic candidates, Brown, Clinton, Harkin, Kerry, and Songus. When Agron moved into a three-way tie with Harkin and Brown with 2% of the vote, most of the TV news didn't mention Agron. The day Bill Clinton captured what may have been the most valuable airtime of the entire election as he spoke to 50 million viewers about his alleged affair was the same day that a poll showed Agron's support at 4%. He had passed Brown and was the fifth leading candidate. When ABC's Sunday Evening News reported this poll, they simply deleted Agron entirely by not reporting his candidacy. During the New Hampshire primary, Agron's only live commercial TV appearance was through this satellite feed to ABC's Nightline. But the Nightline program wasn't directly about the election. When Agron complained to news executives about his lack of coverage, he was told he had not earned the right to media exposure because he had not received enough media exposure. And on stage, the five major contenders for the Democratic presidential nomination. Although Agron was on the ballot in nearly half the country, he was barred from most televised debates, including this one sponsored by the League of Women Voters. He couldn't meet one of the League's main criteria, which was, quote, recognition by the national media as a candidate meriting media attention, unquote. Good evening, and welcome to the Democratic presidential candidates' debate on urban America. 
Agron wanted to debate on urban America, calling for a 50% cut in defense spending and the reinvestment of some of that money into America's decaying cities. We are going to be coming to you, rather, live from Lehman College, and you'll hear a bit of a disturbance in the background, but we'll go on with that in any case. The disturbance is Larry Agron asking to be included in the debate so that he can explain his plans for defense cuts and urban revitalization. Bronxboro President Ferdinand Ferrer and Mr. President, I suggest you wait for just a moment till the man is quieted or chooses to quiet down. I respectfully request the inclusion. All right, Mr. Mr. Agron was quickly arrested. His court date fell on the first day of the Democratic National Convention. During this campaign, but very little said about the problems facing America's cities. Tonight, we'll change all that. Without media exposure and the debates, Agron couldn't quickly receive federal campaign funds and his candidacy lost momentum. You look all right on camera. What's that? You look all right to know how to talk. So. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, you say I got a mustache that shows through here. Okay, Why don't you go get some stuff, Mike? Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Campaign funds. The Democratic Party refused to include Agron in the debates or speak to the networks on his behalf. Agron talked about his exclusion, saying, I've challenged my own party for its continuing complicity in Cold War thinking, Cold War rhetoric, and Cold War budgets. To restore order right now, there are 3,000 National Guardsmen on duty in the city of Los Angeles. Another 2,200 stand ready to provide immediate support. I so to speak. Okay. You see? In 1992, the networks had their own solutions for urban decay. This morning we are here looking for solutions. CBS looked for solutions at L.A.'s Martin Luther King Hospital. Well, a hospital like Martin Luther King can see more trauma than all of Western Europe does in a year. Mm. In fact, there's so much trauma there that the U.S. Army sends its combat surgeons there so they get a sense of what these very severe fear wounds were like. In fact, when I was in the Gulf War, a number of the senior combat surgeons had trained right here at Martin Luther King mm. Hospital. Dr. Bob, thanks. Before he went on air, part of Dr. Bob's diagnosis was cut out because it was too obtuse. Yeah, so what's your impression? I said, my impression is, you know, places like South Central LA and around the country look more and more like real third world countries or third world countries without the hope. That is, they have no medical care, they have no real economy, and, um, they, and yet in a third world country, it's developing. There's some onward development. There's some vision for the future. Well, you know, your, your impressions of the medical care are you talking about? Mm. I think that gets too obtuse. How about, how about if I were to ask about the level of the, the trauma care here? It's always been considered superior, has it not, to other parts of the country? Cook, yeah, 30 seconds. Yeah, it's the best, the best. You know, Can I, why don't I say something like that? Okay. As the conditions of the cities became obtuse to the networks, they turned to the suburbs to render a verdict on the campaign. And later, I on the campaign, you will see and hear some of the suburban voters who may very well decide this election. Back now live from St. Louis, there is news far beyond this city tonight. In, uh, what is this, in Hawaii? Uh, in Haiti. Oh, well, they all look alike. Huh? In Haiti, a huge explosion leveled a three-story building in downtown Port-au-Prince. At least 15 Haitians were killed. Take a look at the roads leading into and out of Los Angeles. Lately, you see more taillights than headlights. A lot of people leaving this town for good. Where are they going? Anywhere else. Why? While the ethnically diverse cities were abandoned for the homogeneous suburbs, the networks created their own recipes for the melting pot. Make a note. Give it to Kathy, who may be the best at this. Since we're going to wish uh, people a happy Rosh Hashanah, which is my idea and a good idea, just don't forget to check when Ramadan is. We have to wish all of our Muslim friends 
Happy Ramadan. And then behind that, when you get to the Buddhist New Year, the year of the rat or the year of the monkey, whatever it is, we have to, we want to, got to be politically correct here, pal. After four Los Angeles police officers were found not guilty of assaulting Rodney King, the TV news moved away from the residents of L.A. and into the sky with 13 television-equipped helicopters. Of justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. I'm sorry, we're, we're still hung up in our court here. Um, they're just marching up and down the streets, and they formed a big bulkhead here at the end of the, at the corner. The distant coverage in the sky was emulated on the ground by the scarce street reporters who tried to glide by without speaking to the protesters of the verdict. With the chance, no justice, no peace is what they're chanting. No peace, no justice, no peace. You can hear them now. We can stick going here. No peace, no justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no, no peace. peace. We ain't this got nothing to say. This should never have changed, people. This should never have been a change of venue. No justice, this no should peace. never have been a change no of justice, venue. No and as a result, no this is what you have. This is what you have. There's not clips no down here. There's no bloods down here. There's just concerned citizens down here that don't like the way the system is done. This is what we're talking about. Could you tell me, sir, could you tell me? Could you tell me? The police are closing in. They're part of the law. Okay, they're off. You did that. They cut us. Huh? They cut us when you did that. Uh -huh. No justice. No peace. The voiceless scenes from South Central L.A., where nearly 50 percent of the children live in poverty, was contextualized by the $600,000 a year TV news anchors. As the looting goes on. In a senseless fashion, people arguing for sanity on the one hand, simultaneous looting in a random fashion for things that people can't even use. 25 years ago, the media's coverage of the riots in the Watts area of Los Angeles was called racially divisive by the federally empowered Kerner Commission. The commission was formed in order to find the root causes of the urban violence of the late 1960s. It found that one cause was the massive economic collapse and poverty of the cities. The other was the media. The Kerner Commission found the media guilty of failing to communicate to all ethnic groups the complex and fundamental problems of race relations. This L.A. news anchor made these comments moments before reporting the verdict in the second LAPD beating trial of Rodney King. Okay, I'm standing by, ladies and gentlemen. We don't have shit to say. We don't have anything to do. But by God, the management of this company deems it necessary that I come on the air. I'm going to have to look up this uh, Kerner Commission thing. Concluded that uh, the the uh, the top causes of uh, the urban violence were number one poverty and number two the media. I'm going to have to look that up. That uh, that sounds really interesting. Okay, back to the show. In just half an hour from now, the jury in the federal Rodney King beating trial will be back in session. The Kerner Commission said media's failure to communicate was caused in part by the media's shockingly backward hiring practices. Hardly any people of color worked as TV news directors, the people who set policy and make decisions. Television responded to the criticism by hiring cameramen, clerks, and makeup artists that were African-American, Latino, and Asian-American. For each of these ethnic groups, the number of TV news directors is a few percentage points above zero since the Kerner Commission's verdict 25 years ago. You, you announced that they get rid of their gate tomorrow and they'll stop tomorrow. You announced that. As the networks covered over the voices from L.A., the candidates told the story of their own. I felt anger. I felt pain, and I thought, how can I explain this to my grandchildren? This was very effective. Yeah, what? Yeah, Bruce's story was great. No, and also the point you talked about talking about both Barbara and your kids. About how do I explain this to my grandchildren? It's great. And given the fact that this is a presidential election year, it's also a challenge to the man who would challenge the president for the country's leadership.
Okay. So to speak. Okay. Of course, everyone knows the old rhyme. In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. We know his voyage took him to the New World, and his arrival changed the world forever. But beyond that, much about Columbus remains the subject of some dispute. During the celebration of the 500th anniversary of Columbus's discovery of the Americas, the only satellite feed I found with a Native American guest was this feed to a local morning talk show. The guest is a historian and a member of the Cherokee Nation. As you, you said he presided over over a death of a quarter of a million people. No, that yeah. wasn't at his own hand. That was well, others who followed him and over, disease over, and that sort of thing. No, but he couldn't control, no I'm it? talking about like his first two years here, a quarter of a million. It's pretty well documented. He took uh, his interpreters. He took his his guides as slaves. Uh, he chopped off the hands of anyone over 14, any male over 14 who couldn't bring in gold. He took women as sex slaves for his men. Dr. Matteo, I want you to thank you very much for coming by. Thanks for spending some time with us this morning on the Good Morning Show. You're welcome. That was brief. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully painless, sir. The painful lessons of Columbus's past were never mentioned as the networks debated his legacy. Interesting debate. I'm not sure we settled it this morning, but we'll we appreciate on. trying. It That's true. <laughs> Thank you both. Thank you. And we'll be back with more of our special edition of today on Governor's Island right after this. What do he say to many cents? Anything? They just, you know, think that he yeah, ruined the paradise and had no respect for nature and treated the Indians like dog do and... What the hell is he doing? Okay. I... So to speak. I think I'm pregnant. The woman on the screen is Murphy Brown, a fictional TV sitcom character. It doesn't help matters when primetime TV has Murphy Brown. He is talking about you. Today's intelligent, highly paid... Vice President Dan Quill blamed the L.A. riots on its citizens' lack of family values, instilled in part by the Murphy Brown TV character. He said it was not economic poverty, but rather a poverty of values promoted by the Brown character, which caused the burning of L.A. Highly paid professional woman, <laughs> mocking the importance of fathers by bearing a child alone and calling it just another lifestyle choice. Politicizing sexuality was not new to Washington. I'm an executive producer. I'll just executive produce this baby. Sexual politics helped Ronald Reagan reach the White House and gave birth to the new religious right. <laughs> After the Republicans lost the presidency to Jimmy Carter, some conservatives theorized if the Republican Party would oppose abortion, they could split the strong Catholic voting bloc of the Democrats and elect a Reagan and Bush ticket to the White House. As a senator, George Bush was against outlawing abortion. But as Reagan's vice presidential running mate, Bush changed his position and supported a ban on abortion. Well, yeah, pay attention to that. Pay attention to that. Abortion is a political issue. It is not a moral issue. It is not an ethics issue. It is not a religious issue. It is a political issue, and deliberately so, and it always has been. That's very important what he just said. given us any specificity about where you stand on it, Senator. In the past, particularly in the House of Representatives, you voted against federal funding for abortions, and that meant for poor women. In some circumstances. Well, tell us the, the circumstances, please. All right, the, the circumstances debated have in, involved a rape and incest and life uh, where the life of the mother is in jail. As a congressman, Al Gore voted against using federal funds for abortion. But as a vice presidential candidate, he changed his position and supported using federal funds for abortion as part of the Clinton health care plan. That's what freedom is all about. That's what tolerance is all about. 
That's what our country stands for. Well, I, I'm still confused. I'll try one more time. When you voted against federal funding for abortions, <coughs> except under the three circumstances you outlined, had your votes carried the day, you would have imposed your belief on poor women in this country. There was no and there is no national health insurance program today. Uh, we do not have the kind of comprehensive coverage. After the abortion questions, Gore's media advisor tells him how to turn around or spin the A question. Okay. And the president of the Christian Broadcasting Network, Mr. Pat Robertson. The 1992 Republican National Platform called for a complete ban on abortion. Nearly 30% of the platform committee was controlled by the Christian Coalition and its president, Pat Robertson. The goal of Robertson's Christian Coalition is to gain working control of the Republican Party by 1996. I have two television networks. I have three radio news networks. I'm starting Standard News. I have 50 uh, reporters right now working for me that are very fine. Robertson's reporters work for his Christian Broadcasting Network, or CBN. Through the 700 Club, CBN News reports reach over 43 million homes in the U.S. Operation Rescue has targeted five abortion clinics in Buffalo for a minimum of two weeks of activities aimed at shutting the facilities down. In 1992, Operation Rescue was a top news story for CBN. A battle both sides vow to win. Andrea Francis, CBN News. On the first day of the Republican National Convention, Operation Rescue broke through this line of clinic defenders and blockaded an abortion clinic near the convention site. <laughs> that same day, Robertson had this discussion with a CBN staff person. I have sent word to keep that Operation Rescue. I don't want one word on this program. Well, not we're, we're not. I don't want to cover it, I don't want to talk about it, and I want to do it. That same morning, Republicans who supported women's right to choose an abortion held a rally in Houston led by Ann Stone. Ann Stone, I will have much I mean, we felt like we should cover it. In don't the cover anything about the abortion debate any longer. It doesn't matter. They passed the platform. Yeah. We need to get cameras covering our rally, our guys. Oh, we're there. We're going to be there. And no, it, was it start? Uh, and then you need cameras just shooting time for people President George Bush. or me sitting in the vice president's spot. Mm -hmm. It's things. Okay. 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 We can have to see this. Both. Both. Okay. Five minutes before. But I believe in objective news. I believe in balanced news. I don't want to slant the news. I just want to tell it like it is. How many camera crews? We have two. Yeah, we have two reporters. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and Jimmy Swaggart was caught with a prostitute, fewer donations to televangelism plummeted. A lot of uh, broadcasters are gone. Some needed to, some it was financial pressure. Televangelist Jerry Falwell's ministry was nearly bankrupt. Then he sent out a fundraising letter which claimed AIDS-infected homosexuals were purposely infecting citizens by knowingly giving their AIDS-infected blood to blood banks. In the fundraising letter, Falwell said, quote, they know they are going to die and they are going to take as many people with them as they can, unquote. His ministry was revived. Seventy-five years ago, a plague descended upon the world and covered the nations of Eastern Europe like a dark cloud. But ladies and gentlemen, a more benign but equally insidious plague has fastened itself upon the families of America. At the Republican National Convention, Robertson characterized communism and government bureaucracies as plagues, a thinly veiled reference to the AIDS crisis. Robertson supports the theory that gays have conspired with other supposedly subversive agents in order to undermine the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, the carrier of this plague is the Democrat Party. Um, that Republican convention was one of the most hateful things. I'm a Republican, but I'll tell you what, Pat Robertson personally was one of the reasons why I voted against George Bush. Okay, now Pat, he's saying you would not let a pro-choice person chair your party, or you would try to stop it. He just uh, uh, contradicted what I just said. I'm sitting here in this chair telling you something different, and he said, I won't do it. How does he know what I'll do? Uh, I, I think uh, uh, if he obviously didn't hear my speech at the convention because it closed with a beautiful story of a lovely lady holding a little uh, a starving child in her arm, and uh, there was a call uh, for a, a better world and, and one nation under God. I can't see how anybody said that was hateful. I don't know where he's coming from, but there's something there that is not uh, just on the surface, I think, because I didn't say the things he said I did. We'll be right back with Pat Robertson and Lynn Martin and more of your phone calls on Larry King Live Then Tina Sinatra. Don't go away. Um, that guy was on the wall. Yeah, he sure, sure, alive. He didn't make rattle. Right. Keep doing it, keep doing it, something like that. If you take the one sentence, turn it around, go into the other issue. Remember, you're answering the question. Okay. You yeah. can talk about Did anything you, you want question? to. Yeah. What, what's that? Did you get a good question? No. This last one is. Well, the last one, I, but yeah, I, I didn't right. get it. And who in the heck is screening these calls? I've had one person call him a bigot, and I've had another person call him a zealot. Let's, let's get some balance out there. Well, the last one. It's too late. Okay. The last one's okay, but the first three were all homosexuals. I know. I know. I've had this you before. Can answer, you can answer the question any way you choose to. I hear you. All right? Remember, so take, take it where you want it to go. Take it where you want it to go. I don't like the producer of this segment. Well, they, it's, uh, they were trying to set me up. Yeah. That's what they told me. And that's what the Harris people told me. Did, did they accomplish it, or, or, or have I come back? Around? No, I think you're fine. I think that I'm just very upset. Yeah. That they were it was, it was, well. You, you haven't come across anybody who's angry. Oh, no, I'm not angry. Who's angry? You look good. Well, it's angry. It would that's be. What's your input? Your position. I think they'll be out of here in about another. I hear you. You're right. I so to speak. You see? Paul. So to speak. Get on. You see? Get on. Paul. According to research and polls on the 1992 election, the information source which Americans valued more than TV news and TV talk shows was the presidential debates. And this would mean that there would be four televised presidential debates, more than ever held in any presidential election. And if Governor Clinton is serious about debating, he will accept this challenge and he will instruct his campaign officials to meet promptly with my campaign officials 
to work out the de details directly between the parties. Let's get it on. Bill, baby, let's do it. Get it on, as we say. Let's get up there and get it on, side by side. Sunday night, Mr. Bush is going to go on Larry King Live. So what I think is, Larry King ought to have us both on there and let the American people call their questions in. That's what we ought to do. Then, then we get the best of both worlds, one moderator and millions of questioners. I think it would really be a great thing. So I've asked our people to contact Larry King and see if we can arrange it. I'm ready to go. Let's get it on. Hi, um, Tom, can you hear me? Yeah. They've just confirmed both sides. They're meeting at 8 o'clock tonight. Okay. Um, I think it's at Mickey's office. Malik, Teeter, Darman will attend for the president, and they have turned down Larry King, so I've rewritten my live lead. After Bush turned down Larry King's show as the site of the first presidential debate, the debate over who would be moderator of the debates continued, as seen in these satellite feeds, recorded over a 10-day period. Al looks great. You saw where he proposed you as the moderator of the debates. Who? What, didn't we? Uh, I think we did. Yeah. No, when, well, when when he was going, when the yeah. president was going to be on I'd the be show. I'd be happy to be at it. That shocks me. I, I think they did. I think I think Sam, I, you get a very well, fair. Yep. I do too. I'm the fairest I'll person. I think. I'll let you go. Try it. Right out. doing great. I will tell you. I'll be the first to tell you. Did they pick the journalists today for St. Louis? Mm -hmm. Did they pick the reporters? No, not yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. And I still think, you know, there's a lot of merit to that. Who's on on Sunday night, we know, yeah? No, the moderator? I don't think we know yet. No, it hasn't been chosen. But you have input, they have input, Pro has input. That's correct. Well, right up my alley. That stuff right up my alley. No one would get it in the edge. What's that? To be fair. You'll sit best in the debates. Because you don't come with any. You could elevate it. Every time we talk about something silly, you say, come on. Mm -hmm. What are we wasting time? To me, yeah. you sit very effective. You could affect, have a great effect on this life. This, let's go get it on. Get it on, so to speak. King was never chosen as a moderator of the debates. Good evening and welcome to the second of three presidential debates between the major candidates for President of the United States. So, President Bush, I think you said it earlier, let's get it on. Good morning. The latest presidential polls show President Bush is closing in on Bill Clinton in the final week before the election. One poll shows the two candidates are almost even. A CNN USA Today poll shows Clinton and Bush virtually deadlocked. Four days before the election, George Bush made his final appearance as president on Larry King's show. What a night, what a finish. What a year for me. Yeah, a year for me, it's been unbelievable. Changed the world. It's um, different. It's CNN poll today. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Strangest year in the history of me. <laughs> I hear you, Tom. Tell me about it. What? Tell me about it. <laughs> Hold on. God, I got a darn cold. You got a cold? Fever. Some of my brothers in the drug business. All the ones. Slight cold. <laughs> Uh, 
Thanks, Patrick. Right ahead, a historic evening. 90-minute special, Larry King Live, with the President of the United States and your phone calls. It's next from Racine, Wisconsin. Don't go away. My brother's in the pharmaceutical business. He says there's a new pill coming from Israel. Better than house of Do you think you're sleeping or be suggested? Great. I so to speak. Okay. You see? Well, It's now uh, shortly after 9 o'clock in the east. Polls are still open in the west, of course, in the mountain time zone as well. Here's a winner in the Rocky Mountain states, Colorado. Eight electoral votes. Perot was a big factor. Taking away Three years after Bush's defeat, the Christian coalition tripled its active membership to one and a half million members. Clinton's taken New Mexico, according to them. Its annual budget has more than doubled, and the coalition holds virtual veto power over the Republican nominee for president in 1996. Rhode Island, Delaware. Mr. Roberts, would you like to or reorganize the Republican Party around the Christian tenets that you hold so dear? I would like to see a winning coalition like Ronald Reagan had. I think we've got to get economic conservatives together with social conservatives and some who are foreign policy advocates of the foreign policy initiatives that we've seen very successfully over the last 10 to 12 years and to put together that coalition. And I, I think that uh, the last thing we need is recrimination and finger pointing and that sort of thing. It's good. The Republican Party will probably have a splendid opportunity uh, if we have some economic collapse in the next two or three years to come back strong in 96. Pat Robertson, thank you very much. Thanks. Brian Gumbel. Tom, that's the closest we've seen to the start of uh, what might be a, a round of finger pointing. Uh, how much of it do you think we are going to see? Well, I think that the Pat Robertson movement, and he's not the only one who's involved in it, is very important and to some Republicans a little terrifying right now because they're very well organized. He says we're very important and very well organized in county by county. Yes, the new religious right. They'll they'll organize out of sight of the conventional machinery and then go out and win. It was reported after the election that the Clinton White House uses the Department of Defense to intercept satellite TV feeds on a regular basis. This monitoring practice started during the 1992 election, as Al Gore's wife, Tipper, found out during the campaign. Everyone's watching you on Little Rock. They're watching these satellite feeds? Oh, yeah, we can, you know, that we, pick, we pull it whenever any of you all do a satellite tour, they pull it down on Little Rock on all the monitors and the whole headquarters. Just the actual interviews, not this right. part. The Clinton campaign also intercepted the satellite feeds of the TV network news. Clinton strategists would watch the network satellite feed of a network news story about Clinton. This would give the strategists the ability to respond to the story before it ever aired on regular network television. Apparently this goal is almost within reach. But he's trying to lift his sights beyond the attack colleges. Four years. Feeling that his goal is almost within reach, Clinton is now trying to lift his sights beyond the attack politics of the campaign. Clinton also monitored the satellite feeds of his opponents. According to the American Journalism Review, the Clinton campaign intercepted the satellite feed of a Bush commercial 36 hours before the commercial aired on network television. 
But here's what Clinton economics could mean to you. $1,088 more in taxes. $2,072 more in taxes. By intercepting the feed, Clinton strategists had the ability to respond to Bush's ad before the ad had ever aired. Four years ago, he asked you to believe him. Read my lips. Now he's asking you to believe his attacks against Bill Clinton. This is a satellite feed of a Clinton rally. The person you just heard speaking was probably one of Clinton's security team standing near an open microphone on the stage. The instructions he was giving may have come from Clinton's staff in Little Rock, which regularly monitored the feeds of Clinton's rallies. Little Rock would watch the satellite feed of the Clinton camera slowly panning the audience like a surveillance camera. If they saw a protester at the public event, Little Rock could call the rally site to alert security. But whenever we did a live satellite feed of like a big rally or something, it was a really very interesting instance. The Buffalo rally, there were some protesters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Little Rock saw it where the advanced people couldn't because they were backstage. So the desk, Dwight and I saw it, called the advanced people on the phone and said, no, walk 10 feet to the left. There's a sign in the camera shot there. Edge that guy over. I mean, so it's like Little Rock directed Buffalo and watched it dismantle on television. Fabulous. And watched the dismantling of a problem. Right. And they, you know, where the advanced person is in a sea of 2,000 oh, right, people, right, right. Little Rock was able to say, Move to, I can see you on TV. Now go two people over to your left. It's really very fascinating. Hmm. High tech. Yeah, that's good. Um, so that's why when they said there are shadows in your face, that was little rock going to me. Shadows on your face. Oh. Yeah. See, everybody wants to see. <coughs> okay, there we go. Interesting show, and uh, again, um, nothing new, nothing old, same old, same old. Except uh, uh, everybody can do all this same junk from their living rooms now. Gothart says new faces sing poop. Captain Sneaky says, but what about Tina Sinatra? I don't understand that reference. Sorry. Yeah. It, it all came back to me as I was watching it. Yeah, I, I definitely remembered almost everything that was in there. Um, depressing stuff. The, uh, The notion that, um, oh, she was up next on Larry King, he said, no, I, I didn't notice that. <laughs> Tina Sinatra, I, uh, I don't know who that is. Uh, Margie says, yes, very interesting, I enjoy it and give it a thumbs up. Yeah, mercifully, it's only an hour long. If, if this had been, uh, if this had been much longer, it would have become intolerable, I think. Well, I'm glad everybody stayed. Uh, I do have to say that I have I have my own experiences bearing out that this stuff is all true. Before this, in the early 90s, I had I was a freelance reporter. Um, uh, I covered uh, I covered some uh, independent sporting events, particularly gymnastics, and uh, I intend I attended quite a few. Um, uh, regional and national gymnastics uh, events and I would um, 
uh, I would come home and see the broadcasts of some of these uh, some of these events, the television broadcasts of some of these events days later, sometimes weeks later. <clears throat> and uh, I almost always uh, felt like this is not the event that I saw. The, this is not the event that I witnessed at all. I don't know what it's the same place, same people, but this doesn't look like the thing that I saw. So every everything on television is complete bullshit. Even things that you would think couldn't be couldn't be manipulated, like uh, sports events. Many times, sports events that are being broadcast as live are actually not live. They were recorded weeks, sometimes even months earlier. Um, the uh, in, in the case of. Uh, uh, gymnastics, gymnastics events and that presidential uh, election thing that one presidential candidate that the networks wouldn't cover I saw that happen with uh, gymnasts um, there would be gymnasts who uh, who were not favored by the uh, uh, by the governing body by the Olympic governing body who simply would not appear in the uh, in the television coverage uh, there was one particular event there, there was a girl uh, named Shelley Stack, who had been in the 1988 Olympics, and uh, uh, three or four years later, she had uh, fallen out of favor, and uh, there was a national—I don't think it was a national championships. Maybe it was. It was in Denver. This one particular year, I remember. <clears throat> she didn't place very highly in the event, but she did place. Uh, she did place fourth, I think in the uh, parallel bars in the uneven parallel bars and in each of the events during during the rotations they would uh, they would post the top four finishers in each event but during the rotation when she competed on uneven parallel bars and placed fourth they only placed they only showed the top three um, it was very uh, um, it was very conspicuous and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I witnessed plenty of times when the, uh, the judges and the uh, officials would uh, actually change the scores after the event was over. They would literally change the scores and put who they wanted uh, in the the top ten or the top uh, or even the or, or even the the winner <laughs> of the event. I saw that happen many times, and. Uh, what was the other thing? Um, I saw one thing where one of the 88 Olympians, it was Brandy Johnson, uh, she stumbled during her floor routine and stepped out of bounds briefly. And after her, after her floor routine, each of the four judges started to, started to post their scores, started to raise their little, little, little flags up, but then but then they all came back down, and then the uh, director of the the women's program walked across the floor, and everyone in the place watched her. And we all sat and w watched her walk all the way across the floor. It took you know a minute or so. She had a, a very animated conversation with one of the judges, uh, and then walked back off the floor. And then that judge picked up all of her papers, put her purse over her shoulder. And walked out of the arena and then the three remaining judges put up their scores and they were uh, and they were all the same um, I saw things like that happen uh, repeatedly so sports are complete bullshit <laughs> complete bullshit um, uh, and what was the other what was the other thing I saw happen oh the 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 thing where Shelly stack didn't appear in the in the scoring, she did appear on screen, and the uh, the broadcasters talked about it. Oh, that one event in Denver was really weird. Uh, they one of the sportscasters for that event was uh, a coach, a woman coach from Oklahoma, who had never done uh, television before. Um, but she was really charismatic and really pretty. So they had her uh, uh, hosting the thing with. Uh, a, a, a sportscaster, the the uh, experienced sportscaster who was doing the thing, 
and um, <clears throat> they were recording their introduction and uh, it was going on and on and on and everyone was waiting to start the competition see the competitions are geared around television coverage the 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 television people don't uh, don't just um, don't just point their cameras at what's happening and the sportscasters talk about what's happening the event waits for the television coverage and during the they they turn on their cameras and they record for two hours or however, however long they're going to have on the network. And at the points where there are going to be commercials, the competition stops and everybody waits. So, so when they they're editing it while they're uh, while the event is going on, so that they don't have to do any editing later. So whenever you hear uh, uh, an event say that it's recorded live on tape, that's what it means. It's being edited live. Uh, but uh, but this woman uh, coach who was who was acting as a sportscaster at that time she was having trouble and having to stop and start over, and so they were starting the timer uh, over again each time this would happen, and people were waiting and waiting to start the event. And I remember seeing uh, Bella Caroli walking. He he came up out of his uh, out of his bunker or whatever and walked stalked across the thing and he was waving his arms and talking. You know what's what's the hold up? What's the hold up? It's because she was having trouble. Uh, getting started, and then uh, the uh, the the event wasn't broadcast until like two months later. It was like like two months. It was a long time later. And when I saw it, the sportscasters uh, at one point the the camera was pointed at Shelley Stack, and the day that it was broadcast happened to be her birthday. Not the day that it was recorded, which had been two months earlier. But the day that it was broadcast was her birthday, and the sportscasters pr were pretending that the thing was live. And when the camera was pointed at her, one of them said, "There's the birthday girl. It's her birthday today." So many times when you think you're seeing live sports events, mm -mm. it might have happened weeks earlier, months earlier, and they're, they're pr the sportscasters are pretending it's live. They're telling you it's live, and it is not live. That's harder to get away with today, I imagine. Uh, with live streaming, but I saw that kind of shit go on uh, plenty of times. It was really uh, discouraging and uh, disgusting. Um, yeah, so television is complete bullshit. If if people don't understand that at this point, <laughs> I, I, I can't help you. So there's there's my story about my experience. So when I saw this documentary, I wasn't surprised by anything I saw, but man, was I uh, but man, was I discouraged. In fact, when uh, when the the Bush campaign, uh, um, Captain Slinky says, but such delicious bullshit. Um, and Eric says that might explain the Cleveland Browns. It might, yeah, <laughs> it might. Um, there was uh, there was one uh, athlete's mother who was in the. Uh, was in a hotel bar uh, before an event, and she overheard uh, one of the uh, network uh, cameramen uh, asking the uh, uh, asking the uh, um, the uh, uh, the USGF the the US Gymnastics Federation uh, uh, programming director. He, the a cameraman was asking the programming director why he was not allowed to point the camera at that particular woman's daughter. And this woman actually overheard him saying, asking that question. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, what was I going to say? But yeah, when uh, um, when the Bush campaign in the year 2000 uh, came along, I saw the the way the Bush campaign, the way the Republicans were behaving, I saw them as like, they were behaving exactly the way the directors of the U.S. Gymnastics Federation behaved. And uh, so I understood it. I, I understood what, uh, what the Republicans and the Bush campaign were doing. The Bush family, by the way, all that footage you saw of uh, George Bush Sr. from the early 90s, he was such a disgusting person. He he really was, and his son was so much worse. 
in the when he became president in 2000 and I I just despaired when I saw all that happening because the the Bush family you should read up on the Bush family if you don't know anything about the Bush family. They the reason the Bush family got into politics in the late 1940s was because after World War II was over, I mean right after World War II was over in 1945, Congress prosecuted um, uh, uh, George Bush's father or grandfather, I, I forget who, but anyway, the, the, the patriarch, the, the man who was head of the Bush family, Congress prosecuted him for treason because the Bush family businesses had been funneling money to Hitler, and I'm not making that up. So Prescott Bush, probably. That's probably it, he, Prescott Bush, maybe Vannevar Bush. I I forget which which, but they were funding Hitler. And I'm not exaggerating. I'm not making that up. They were literally funding, fucking Hitler. And he decided that the Bush family was going to get into politics so they so that they could control that shit and so they wouldn't be bothered with that shit anymore. And then these two assholes became president. So um, I was not surprised at all when Trump uh, came along because the the Republican Party, starting with Reagan straight through to today, led directly to this disaster we've got with Trump. It was, it's a direct line. There's there's nothing um, uh, there's nothing surprising or outlandish about Trump and his success. I hate even saying the guy's name. Because the way uh, the behavior of Republican presidents leading up to this guy is a direct line. They the the racism, the homophobia, the the uh, anti-abortion, um, all of it led straight to Trump. And any Republican who tells me that they're upset about Trump, I tell them, I tell them to go to hell. I tell them to go straight to hell because they caused this. Uh, thank you for the follow, Mr. Fox guy. After that, uh, while I'm while I'm ranting, uh, but yeah, that's that's all true. Um, uh, thank you all for watching. Um, this was all very uh, educational, um, thrilling in a certain way, depressing in many ways. Uh, uh, I think uh, we all need to take respons uh, personal responsibility by voting. People get to, people despair about voting. They, people complain and holler about how the voting system is broken. The voting system is broken, but voting does work. It actually does work. And people complain about uh, having to, having no choices, having no good choices, and being forced to vote for the lesser evil. Don't let that bother you. Voting for the lesser evil is exactly how things change. If you don't vote, you're giving your vote to a Republican because Republicans always vote. Never forget that. Uh, the reason Trump is in the White House right now is because liberals just decided not to vote in the last presidential election. He, he didn't win the vote. Liberals just decided not to vote because they were so frustrated, and that makes me very angry. Um, uh, Minnesota says, sometimes I miss being a child because my eyes have been open for a few years now. It's kind of depressing, all the lies. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you don't have your voting, uh, um, if you don't have your voter registration worked out, for Christ's sake, get it worked out. Um, and don't ever complain about how you don't have time to vote because every every election, every local election, every national election, the uh, the voting polls are open for weeks ahead of time. You, you can early vote. You can vote at night. There's plenty of opportunities to vote. Um, so, and if you if you decide not to vote, then don't complain. Seriously, if you decide not to vote, then shut the hell up. Um, <laughs> there's a lumpy Chewbacca there. Oh, we got a ten dollars from Captain Sleepy, Captain Slinky. I said Captain Sleepy. You probably are sleepy, aren't you? <laughs> uh, Eric says it was interesting, depressing, but not surprising. Yeah, and I hope you learned something about sports casting as well, because <laughs> it's all it's all bullshit. It's all complete bullshit. Uh, thank you all for the donations. Um, uh, Mr. Fox guy says, if you have time to sit in a fast food drive through you have time to vote. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, we're at uh, 70 actually $90, because of the $20 from Miranda. We're only $10 away from the $100 goal for tonight. 
uh, so before I go, uh, I'm gonna make uh, I'm gonna make one more plea for one more donation. Everyone is still here. Everyone who watched the thing is still here, and I'm 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 glad for that. People haven't uh, people haven't jumped ship. Um, I'm terribly exhausted, and uh, and it's it's only 8:30. <laughs> the sun's the sun's still out, and uh, I'm gonna have to go straight to bed. I take something to help me sleep. Um, I've got plenty of work to do tomorrow. I'm gonna do some recording for my uh, my personal channel, for the Think Bolt channel on YouTube. Um, Captain Slinky said, I was so happy to have the night off. And uh, Minnesota says, so true, so true. Um, the, the night off, what, what what do you normally do on uh, on Saturdays? Eric says, I hope to do something fun and riffable next week. That's good. Yeah, um, Eric, be sure to let me know what you're doing. If I'm not, do, do you have a, a do you have a Twitch or something? Am I not following uh, something that you're doing? Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Let me know, cause I'll I'll definitely want to try to see uh, what you're doing. What's on? Margie says what's on next Saturday. I don't know. I don't know. I usually don't so decide until like Wednesday or, or Thursday. Uh, we had been going. It depends on what happens during this week. I might show another interesting documentary. I'm really pleased with how many people showed up and how many people stayed. Um, if anyone has suggestions, it's going to need to be, I don't mind looking at suggestions, but to keep in mind, it'll have to be something that's public domain, something that I can legally show. There are some things that I can fudge, some things that I can get away with. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Fox Guy says, glad you showed this instead of Santa Claus Conquers the Mars. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm glad I, I decided to do that. Um, uh, and he says, but I still would like to see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, me too. I always would like to see Santa Claus Congress of the Martians. Um, Mr. Fox Guy says, I'm with you on public domain material. Uh, yeah, I I do want to continue to to recycle the stuff that we showed at the studio to uh, to live audiences uh, to, to get those on, on live stream here. Uh, but I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Um, uh, Captain Slinky says, save Santa for Leon Day. I don't know what Leon Day is. I, I don't get that reference. June 25th. What is what is Leon Day? You're going to have to explain that to me. I'm uh, I'm Captain America here. I don't get the reference. Uh, uh, I'm too old, probably. Um, halfway to Christmas. That's called Leon Day? Um, I've never heard that before. Where did that come from? Uh, Minnesota says, thank you for showing this. People need to see what really goes on. Yeah, yeah, people do. Um, just to, just keep in mind that voting does work, um, but you have to do it. Uh, Leon equals no, Noel backwards. <laughs> now see, I've never heard that before. Who invented that? Where did that come from? <sighs> Leon Day, for Christ's sake. <laughs> he says it's real google it in all caps i uh, i don't care i'm not gonna google it i'm <laughs> i don't care <laughs> um uh, uh, uh what's her name um not to <clears throat> morbid heart design said that she's gonna do something called Christmas in July, and said that I should I should do it when she's doing her Christmas in July thing. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, Eric says Google makes it real. Yeah, of course everything on Google is true. It's not like Google is not like television at all. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> uh, thank you again, uh, everybody, for showing up. Do, can we get ten more dollars? Can we get a, another ten dollar donation? Um, <coughs> I know. Uh, I, I, I hate to sound like a, um, like a, uh, uh, like a, uh, what's what's a, uh, uh, PBS public television, uh, but but really yeah, we yeah we do have fundraising going on all the time. We do always need. Uh, Captain Slinky says Google is like the blue fairy. Google Pinocchio, make him a real boy. <laughs> Mr. Fox says NPR. Yeah, that's NPR, PBS, whatever. Um, oh, the blue fairy, boy! Whenever I, uh, whenever I read the Pinocchio stories, the blue fairy just 
just ruined everything. She, she, she could have left well enough alone. Actually, the Blue Fairy is in the Disney version. She's not in the the original uh, the original book at all. Have you ever have any of you ever read the original Pinocchio stories from the Italian newspapers that they were published in? It was a weird weird shit. The um, there was no Blue Fairy that brought uh, Pinocchio to life. Um, this little log that Geppetto found in the woods was already talking when he found it. In fact, that's how he found it, because it was talking. <laughs> it's, it's a crazy story. Um, uh, Devin uh, just joined us on Mixer. He says, I'm here. Well, you're, you're too late, Devin. I'm sorry. We already we just ended the movie. Uh, Mr. Fox Eye says, did he kill Jiminy Cricket? Yes, he did. Uh, the Cricket doesn't have a name. He shows up at the beginning when uh, Pinocchio... Uh, the, the first night that Pinocchio comes to life, he's in the house alone, and this cricket, uh, this cricket comes out from a crack in, uh, between the stones and the hearth, and says, "If if you, if you want to be, um, you're gonna need to be a good boy if if you want to be, uh, uh, if you want to be real, if you want to have a good life, you need to listen to your father." And Pinocchio picks up a mallet and bam. Bam! <laughs> That's the end of the cricket. He, he he has one sentence, I think. But then I think later in, in the story, I think the cricket's ghost shows up. I think I think the cricket's ghost actually shows up and admonishes Pinocchio some more and literally haunts him. I I, I didn't finish the whole thing. Captain Slinky says short movie. Yeah, Walt Disney had to invent Jiminy Cricket because the movie was really problematic. They had gotten the movie to a certain point and they were watching it and, and Disney was like, this is this is just dismal. We need <laughs> we need a sidekick or something. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Disney changes all the things. At least with uh, you know Pinocchio we at least with the uh, Snow White and Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty, those were ancient fairy tales. And uh, with Pinocchio, the author was dead. Uh, but then, uh, but then he comes along and wants to do Mary Poppins, and the author is alive, and she doesn't want him to do Mary Poppins. Yeah, it's a it's a mess. And uh, Rick says he's supposed to get lynched at the end. Pinocchio, yeah, the, he actually gets hung from a tree, doesn't he? But he's made of wood, so. <laughs> is there any film true to the original? Um, Eric asks, is there any film true to the original? Yeah, um, probably, uh, um, what am I thinking of? But they, they would all be terrible movies, like Dune. <laughs> um, you know, super long, super boring, because they're too literal. And Rick says Pinocchio was an a-hole. Yeah, he was not a, a, he was not a nice character at all. Um... Yeah. Okay. Well, I've I've killed enough time. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you for the donations. We came close to making our hundred. Um, I'll decide uh, what to show uh, next week. Maybe I'll come up with something educational. Maybe uh, maybe I'll decide to show some comedy. I don't know. I do want to show. Um, uh, I, I do want to show my man Godfrey. Um, because I've, I've watched that several times recently. We showed it live at the studio. I've never streamed it, though. That is a hilarious movie and extremely well made and beautifully written. Um, <clears throat> everybody's thanking me, and I'm, I'm thanking everybody else. So I'll go ahead and say good night. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.